Hey, 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 this is Lawrence Tam. Welcome to this midday training webinar. Let me go ahead and hit record. I think we are good to go. Hey, if you're on here, let's make sure you're riding the right airplane, like I like to say. is When you're going on an airplane, they're like, if you're not heading to Cleveland, um, you're probably on the wrong airplane. <laughs> so if you're on this training webinar, you probably came in through a link that was talking about how to do automatic sales, how to sell with your eyes closed, um, how do you automatically increase your conversions without even knocking on someone's door, right? And so my name is Lawrence Tam, and I want to show you my desktop real quick. Um, well, let, let me know. Do you see my desktop? Let me see if we have good audio and visual. Go ahead and throw in the, in the questions box. If you go ahead and see my, my picture of uh, my wife and I, we were in Maui for like two weeks in Hawaii. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, uh, Cassandra. Thanks, Rob. Sweet, yeah, yeah. So this is, you know, this is my life. You know, um, I used to be ca a caged animal. I like to say, uh, I used to be in a, I think it was an eight by eight cubicle, um, working as a mechanical engineer. Did that for over a decade. I think it was like twelve years, um, plus or minus. And you know, I did everything from um, optical sorting to oil and gas to just, you know, semiconductor. I did all of that. And the thing I realized was. There's got to be an easier way to increase your sales and, and make more money online without spending, you know, a ridiculous amount of money building sites or, you know, driving paid traffic. And so since 2008, I have been able to build an empire, I like, I like to say. It is an empire. It's, it's like little minions, like little people, little websites that have been making me money ever since 2008. And I kind of want to show you what that is, how it works, but I was like, well, if I just showed it, a lot of you might know me, but I wanted to bring out a specialist, someone who actually does it full time and they focus on the, the art of selling without speaking, right? The art of selling without actively chasing somebody. It's the whole attraction marketing and giving value and pooling. And he has a really, really cool um, presentation for you. I think you'll get a kick out of it. You're going to learn something. And I sent out a poll recently. Um, this mo uh, when you first got on, I had to close it out. And it looks like 80% of you know or know how to use a keyword. And so, if the 20% of you who did not know what a keyword was, well, maybe I'll let I'll let our special guest go into his presentation, and and you'll you'll get a better understanding of what that is. And if you've seen some of my trainings, you'll notice I like to do really short to the point. But really, I, I've always alluded to there's issues with some of the trains that I have because if you don't have a proper tool, then it's your own manpower. It's your own hours, right? But as an engineer, I love using systems. I love using tools. It's kind of like trying to hammer in a nail with your own fist. I mean, you could probably do it, but it's going to hurt. Now, let us, let us help you really, really understand how I've been able to do SEO, blogging, video marketing, using keywords, having automatic sales, and how you can do it immediately after this training. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my special guest, and I want to thank him. I actually was, uh, I, I chased this guy down, right? I've known this guy for, uh, it's, I've known out of him for a while, put it that way. I've been using his tools, I don't think he realizes this, but I've been using his tools for almost two years now, and I, I would not be here um, promoting um, or having a trainer come on who I didn't believe knew their stuff or had the tools that you could use that I've been using for two years. And I want to be able to show you what he's been doing. And so I got on the, um, a Skype chat with them. I was like, hey, look, my team, my clients, my Facebook friends, they're hungry. They want to know what a top flight keyword research um, internet marketer, SEO person does. And so I, I, hunt, I, I hunted down this guy uh, overseas. His name is Sam Haney. Uh, hopefully, I pronounced the last name right. And he's overseas, uh, I believe, in Switzerland. I've uh, been to Switzerland, Jungfrau, beautiful place, awesome area. And I, I said, hey, look, would it be okay if we did a webinar and we showed my clients, my prospects, my Facebook following how to do proper keyword research? Because I know that's something that's lacking. Because people will go after like generic broad keywords of cars, plants. Marriage, I mean, like you never rank for those, and so I wanted him to come in and start really drilling down and really f formulate a plan for you to take action. So, please introduce my man Sam from Switzerland. Sam, are you here? Hey, yeah. Hi, Lawrence. This this is me, Sam. 
hope everyone can hear my voice all right. Um, I hope I've got my volume set up all right. So yeah, thank you very, very much for the opportunity. I'm really looking forward to this um, presentation, to this webinar. And I think we've got a lot of really cool content um, ready to share with your people. Sweet. Sweet. And I appreciate your time. I know it's, uh, it's not easy. So I'm going to mute out, and I'll give you the floor. You have a presentation, and you should have control now. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Let me just quickly um, check with everyone on the call. If you can just give me a quick OK that you can see my screen. Uh, Who is Swiss Made Marketing is the title on the slideshow. And um, yeah, if you can just, OK, I'm getting loads and loads of OKs. Fantastic. So again, Lawrence, thank you so much um, for the opportunity to be able to present um, what we do over at Swiss Made Marketing. So as the name suggests, we're a company in the middle of Europe called Swiss Made Marketing, and we focused on the art of yeah, driving traffic over Google organic search, so with SEO. Um, and we'll go into a bit more detail about what that means exactly, but we sort of focused on the area of inbound marketing, so selling without having to do it actively, as Lawrence said. And yeah, we've been able to expand. We have uh, an office in near the capital of Switzerland. We're a team of 10 people, so this photo isn't quite um, yeah, the most current one anymore, but it kind of gives you an idea of where we are and what kind of people we are. We also have um, further team members now in the US, so we've expanded to other countries, also with you know all the time zone differences and things like that. And basically, our main vision or goal for our company is to help people build themselves an own profitable online business. And we want to do that by creating software and providing training showing exactly the steps people will need to take to, to reach that goal. And we want to make their lives easier by creating tools which automate as much of the things that are possible. And so I want to start my presentation by showing you this image of a shopping mall. And I want to ask you, why are companies prepared to pay so much money to have a few square meters, or I don't know what um, metrics you have in the US, but you know, just have a small space in this mall um, yeah, why are people willing to spend probably thousands, thousands and thousands of dollars to have that? And the answer is traffic. It's because if you can have your shop in this mall, you've guaranteed people seeing your shop, seeing your offer every single day. And it's like kind of the most important question, or it's probably the first question you'd be asking yourself when you, um, yeah, when you decide for a location for a shop. It, that's like the first question, okay, where am I going to position it so enough people see my shop? But when it comes to the internet, it's like loads of people invest days and weeks and months in creating this perfect website, but they don't really think about, you know, okay, where can I position my website so that loads of people are going to see it, so that targeted people are going to see this website? And so many people end, like, end up like this man, They've just uploaded a website, or maybe uploaded it a few months ago, and they're looking at their statistics at their Google Analytics, where you can see how many people visited your website, and it's like you know just a handful, and there's like nothing really going on. And um, my question is, um, can you relate to this? Can you relate to you looking at a website statistics tool with just a handful of visitors? If you can relate to that, give me a yes in the chat box or in the questions box. So if you've oh, Opened it. If you have a website and you can relate to this issue, <laughs> okay, so I'm getting loads of yeses for sure and okay, yeah, so it's clear. So that's why I put together this presentation with the following content. I want to have a look at the basics and, you know, I'm aware that probably a lot of you already know this, but it's still sometimes good to have a look at, you know, the basics of what we're actually doing here. And I want to present the most powerful source of traffic, maybe in a new light, which you might not have looked at it from that position before. I want to have a look at the foundation of successful websites. What is it that differentiates a, su a successful website, you know, generating thousands of visitors, thousands of leads, thousands of sales, whatever, from websites which just don't work? 
And then we want to get into, you know, real steps, actionable steps. What are the steps to prof profitable keywords? And we also have a look at, you know, the basics. What is a keyword? Why is that important for my website? And how can I put this into a useful order which will make my website profitable? And on these presentations, I also, also like to show real life examples so that you can see this stuff is actually working, it's actually happening. Um, this isn't just you know theory being shown on a few PowerPoint slides. And at the end, we put together a really special opportunity just for you people, customers of Lawrence Tam. It's a really one-time opportunity, and we also have a very special bonus, um, which is also only available through this webinar. So it's probably worthwhile sticking around. Also, I'm going to take you know all the time necessary to answer any questions at the end of the webinar. Now I'm keeping um, a view on the on the questions box during the presentation as well as I can. So if you have a question while I'm presenting, you know, just feel free to type it in. And if it's like you know, if it fits the place where I'm at, I'm gonna you know just maybe uh, take it into account. But otherwise, we'll take enough time at the end of the presentation to answer all questions. So if it doesn't get answered during the presentation, please take a note of your question and ask it again at the end. The basics of the most powerful source of traffic, and I want to compare it with traditional advertising. Why does traditional advertising often fail? Put yourself into the shoes of this lady. She's come home after a hard day's work, sits on her sofa, and just wants to watch TV, wants to watch her favorite TV show. And yeah, after a few minutes, her show gets interrupted by this company with an advert trying to sell cheap holidays on a beautiful island in Mallorca. What is one of the most, um, yeah, what is one of the most main reasons why this traditional type of advertising doesn't work? And the answer is interruption. Okay, so every form of advertising, sort of in the traditional world, TV, radio, magazines, whatever. People who are looking at you know, those media, they're actually doing something entirely different. This lady is w wanting to watch her favorite TV show. And in that moment of time, she has absolutely no interest in you know, seeing the advert. So as an advertiser, you have to do an incredible job of interrupting people doing something entirely different to even get use yourself noticed, get your offer noticed. So the same applies also to a newspaper, you know, if you have, if you pay thousands and thousands to have a, an advert in a newspaper, you know, you're going to have to do a really good job of interrupting that person which is doing something entirely different. And that's why, you know, this um, platform called Google is just so amazing, I mean compare it. If on the other hand, you're this guy, who's taking time to fire up Google, open the browser, type in Google, type in a search query, and is actively looking for cheap holidays on Mallorca, in that moment of time, he has just revealed that he's actively looking for good deals to go on holiday. Do you see the crucial difference between traditional advertising and Google? This is the most, see, that's why I believe this is the most amazing marketing instrument that has ever existed. The big difference is that up until now, up until we had things like Google, the only way you could really get your message out was by companies trying to reach customers with their message. And in this new era, it's now the customer who's actively looking for potential customer, uh, companies. Okay, so everything's just switched around by 180 degrees. So the question really is now, okay, I think we, we all agree. I mean, I think this is like, you know, this is like the basics of the basics. And I know all of you know this, but so we've just realized again how powerful Google actually is. But what's the key to getting into this traffic? What's the key to reaching people actively looking for our services, actively looking for things we're, we're offering. And the answer is, of course, keywords. The 
queries people are actually typing into Google. And before we go into more detail as to, you know, what keywords are exactly, how do we find them and, you know, what things do we need to take into account, I want to show you or share with you the three crucial cornerstones of successful websites, okay? So this is just one more thing we need to understand which makes a huge difference if we know that when we then go a step further and look for keywords we want to position ourselves for. So how many of you um, know the this uh, type of funnel? So how many of you have seen such a funnel before? If you've seen such a funnel before, give me a yes into the questions box. Just want to make sure, um, you know, this is something. And yeah, I'm getting an oh yeah from Leah, so that's great. Okay, so whoops. These are the three things you need to know off by heart if you want to have a successful website. You need to be really aware of the fact that the number one thing is you need something coming into the funnel and that's traffic. Your website is like a funnel and you need to get traffic pouring in. And your website or your business needs to have an element which can convert this traffic pouring in at the top into sales at the bottom. And what I want to share with you is a secret, well, or just something you need to know, which is going to make a huge difference. So I just have two examples with a few figures to get you, you know, to realize the power of this mechanism. So if, you know, hypothetically you have a website getting traffic, getting a thousand visitors a month, and you have a website converting at 1%. So 1% of these visitors are actually making a sale on your website. You'd be getting 10 sales a month. And if every sale were, say, $300, you'd have 3,000 in revenue, right? So far, so good. But if we can not only increase traffic, but also increase the conversion, this is what happens. If we can not only get more traffic, but more of the right traffic, where the traffic is actually going to convert better, where it's more targeted towards a business, and you know these are just tiny figures. If we can just increase conversions by 1%, but also double the traffic, you're not only doubling your income, you're multiplying it by four. Okay, so this is the power of these three simple cornerstones. The traffic you're getting onto your website, the website yourself, itself, the business, and the sales pouring out at the bottom. So who wants to have a look or who wants to uh, know how to find traffic which converts better? Who wants to have a website which, yeah, increases revenue in this kind of manner? If you want to see the, <laughs> um, yeah. The, the secret to all of this, type it in. So I'm getting me, all of us, yeah, we want to see this. That's, that's fantastic. That's great. So now we're getting closer to what it's really all about. So getting the traffic which converts better has something to do with these keywords. And I just want to show you a process, a typical, you know, sort of step-by-step -step process of people, you know, going about building up a website. So I don't know if you've already done this, but quite often people will start by trying to figure out what keywords fit to their website. Now the trouble is that a lot of pe people, you know, or I've, I've noticed a lot of people not using keyword tools or using keyword tools and not looking at the right data. So they're just, you know, randomly looking for some keywords and they just randomly choose one and say, okay, I'm going to build my website around this keyword. And based on that, they might choose a domain. It doesn't have to be, but sometimes you would then sort of use a main keyword to also choose a domain. And you're obviously going to build your content around that keyword because you want to, you know, rank well in the search engines. You want to provide an answer. So, I mean, essentially, keywords are people asking questions and they want an answer to that question. And so you're going to create content which answers that question, right? And once you've got that, you're probably going to do some form of promotion. So you want to, I don't know, contact other blog owners which are going to make a guest post about you or, you know, maybe go to a few directories where you add your website to those so it's, it gets a few links, things like that. With the goal, obviously, in the end of getting a good ranking for that keyword so you can get traffic from that keyword. 
Now the trouble is that if you do this very first step wrong, if you choose wrong keywords, if you have a bad keyword to start off with, the promotion isn't going to be a lot of fun. So first of all, you're going to be investing loads and loads of time in you know creating this website, creating content, and promoting it is going to be a real hard time because maybe the keyword is a really tough keyword where there's a really um, where there's a lot of hard competition, tough competition, which is really hard to beat. And so in the end, you know you've had all this work and you have no reward. On the other hand, if you choose a good keyword, if you know what you're doing to start off with, the promotion is going to be really easy because you know what you're up for and you're probably going to choose a keyword in the first place where you know, okay, I can compete with that. And in the end, you're going to be successful. So what I'm trying to bring over is the foundation of every successful website has something to do with these keywords. If you get this first step wrong, everything else is going to be doomed to fail. Okay. So it's just really important to get this first step right because otherwise you're just going to be investing so much time into content, into promotion, into you know just effort which is going to be worthless. Okay. I hope you're with me. So let's have a look at the three steps to getting to these profitable keywords. What do I really have to do now to get to these good keywords? The first thing, the first step is we need to know how many people are looking for the keyword. So if we have keyword ideas, we need to figure out or we need to have some form, some way to know, okay, people are actually looking for this keyword. Okay, this is how many people or how many times it's being searched for. And that's already one of the first things where um, there are a few traps which you can fall into. Um, there's a tool from Google which is free of charge. It's called the Keyword Planner Tool. Google Keyword Planner Tool. So maybe what I'll do is before I explain these different match types, we'll just quickly head over to my browser. And um, if you open up your browser, I mean, you can just search for Google Keyword Planner. And you can just click on the first link. And what you need to do is, if you don't have an AdWords account, you would need to create a free account. Okay, and you don't need a credit card to have um, one of these. If you don't want to, you know, run ads, you only need a credit card once you actually want to spend um, advertising fees. So I've got this um, demo account. I'm just going to log into. Here we go. And um, so you can get a free account which can do exactly this. And this would then open this free Google Keyword Planner tool. And my question is, how many of you have used Google Keyword Planner tool before? So if you've used Keyword Planner tool before, give me a yes. If you haven't, give me a no in the questions box. So I just have a really rough idea you know, of how many people have used this. So I'd say it's like about 80% yes. Um, people saying, OK, um, the planner is the new tool. But I have a lot of no's as well, so yeah, maybe it's seventy percent yes. So that's good. So with this tool, I'm just going to do a very quick example. Let's uh, stick with the holiday example. So I'm going to search for holidays in Mallorca, and you can set the targeting to a country. So I'm just going to have to quickly set it up correctly to the U.S. And you can then say, okay, I want to search obviously in the English language. I think. If you open it up, this would be the default setting. And then you just click on Get Ideas, and then you can click on Keyword Ideas, and that gives you information about these different keyword terms. And we're going to have a closer look at that in just a moment. But something I just need to talk to you about is that there was, so if you use this data which Google provides, they often talk about match types. They talk about um, match types for the number of searches, and they talk about broad, phrase and exact match. My point is or something very important and this this is something you need to write down. This was before summer of this year. So before summer of 2013, you would have needed to know what these different match types mean. And chances are pretty high if you know if this whole keyword idea, you know, grabs you if you realize, you know, the need for this and if you do maybe more research for, for, you know, how to do keyword research and things like that, you, 
sooner or later you're going to stumble over a guide which is talking about match types. And all you need to know is just ignore it. Okay? This has disappeared. So Google made a big change. They updated their keyword tool. And there used to be a, a different keyword tool available in Google AdWords, but they've removed that. And the good thing is that the number of monthly searches you can get for every single keyword idea in the Google Keyword Planner tool is now always only exact. And I don't need to explain that any further because you can basically just you know take it for granted that the number of searches you see here are the exact number of searches this keyword is getting. They used to sort of add other figures to that which kind of made it more complicated but in this area they've made it more easier. So very important for you to know, number one, to find out how many people are looking for a keyword, you can do this free with Keyword Planner tool and you can take the numbers in the average monthly searches. The second very, very important thing to understand about keywords is how much money they're going to make. And I hope you remember the slide where I showed you the funnel and where I showed you that if we can get the right traffic, we're going to increase conversions which is going to have a huge impact on our bottom line. To explain this, and it's kind of, yeah, I hope I can explain it easily enough with this diagram, but what I want to do is I want to try and show you the process people go through when they, you know, search for a product and the process they go to before they actually buy. So what I'm trying to show you here is the time, so maybe this is a time frame over a few weeks. And this person, it took this person maybe three weeks to actually buy. And you can see the larger this green bar is getting, the higher the buying intention, the higher the probability he's actually going to buy. Okay? And we're going to stick with the, um, the vacation example. And basically, when someone decides to, you know, book a holiday, book a vacation, it's not like they just, you know, they just wake up and say, oh, I'm going to go to holiday there. It's probably, you know, over time, they were influenced, first of all, by traditional advertising methods. Maybe they saw an advertisement on the TV, or maybe they saw a newspaper ad, or maybe, you know, they received a mailing through the post or something like that. So that kind of gave them, you know, the idea, oh, I actually want to go on holiday. But the buying intention isn't going to be, you know, amazingly high. I mean, if you see a TV spot, it's not like you're just going to run to the shop or run to the, you know, travel agent and book holidays. It's more like, okay, you're becoming aware that you want to go on holiday. And maybe that brings you to the point where, you know, maybe one or two weeks later, you then decide, okay, I really want to go on holiday. And so I'm going to search for, you know, maybe just generally vacation. I just want to know where are people going on vacation nowadays. And maybe you figure out or maybe you heard your friend went on vacation in Mallorca. It's a beautiful island here in Europe, by the way. And so you refine your search. So you search for vacation ideas and possibilities on that island. And maybe you then further, you know, extend your search. And then you say, okay, I want to stay at a hotel. So you then search for hotels, vacation on Mallorca. And you can see as this time goes on, the higher the probability people are actually going to buy. And maybe after one or two weeks, you then come to the conclusion, okay, I want to go on holiday on Mallorca in an all-inclusive holiday, and I want to go with my family, with my kids. So in the end, you're searching for children's holidays all-inclusive in the specific area on Mallorca. And you see how over time, you know, the thing this person's looking for becomes more and more clear and the more and more clear it is, the search term, the higher the probability he's actually going to buy. Okay? And what I'm trying to show you is that if there's one place in this journey you want to be, it's at the end. So even though a search term, a general search term like vacation may get millions of search queries every month from loads of people, it's not really of much value to have your website showing up there unless you're a huge brand because the buying intention isn't really that high. So the place where you want to be is one step before people are taking out their credit cards and then buying. <laughs> so ideally you want those keywords, you want your website to show up then when people already have the credit card next to their keyboard, right? <laughs> and the good news is 
that if you understand this process, this place right at the end is actually the cheapest, most effective, and most profitable area you can position your website at. Okay, so out of all of this, these places where you can position yourself as a company, where you can position your website, position it right, at, positioning it right at the end is actually it requires the least effort, and it, it's actually the cheapest. <laughs> okay, how cool is that? So, are you with me? So this, this is what we're talking about. This is what I want to show you. I want to show you the secret to getting to finding these keywords which are at the end of this buying cycle. Okay, so that's this is all about the buying cycle, about the process people are going through um, when finally they decide to buy a product. So num we've looked at the first two important things. So number one was how many people are looking for the keyword, the search volume. Number two was the keyword value. Okay, we want valuable keywords where it's worth our time, worth our website being positioned there. Keywords where people are having their credit card next to their keyboard and ready to buy. But number three is very, very important, and a lot of people just ignore this because it's kind of difficult. <laughs> is figuring out, do I actually have a chance of ranking for a keyword? What use is it if I see this amazing keyword opportunity, getting loads of searches, being at the end of a buying cycle, if I don't have a chance of ranking for this keyword in a million years, because it's just, you know, my competition is just so tough. And something very important to note down as well is, Keyword competition has nothing to do with the number of websites ranking for a keyword. Okay, so here we've got another example of just a, a random keyword, but it could also be um, "holiday Mallorca." Will always so if you search for that on Google, you always see how many results are ranking or would be showing up for this keyword. And you might stumble again across, you know, um, guides saying, "Okay, if this." figure is below say a hundred thousand it's an easy keyword and if it's over five hundred thousand it's a tough keyword so they're saying the more people that are trying to rank for a keyword the more websites that are potentially trying to rank for a keyword the tougher the competition is okay and I want to prove to you that having lots of competition having more competitors does not make it harder to win okay so Competition, the number of competitors I have, does not need to bother me. It's not going to have any influence as to how difficult it is to win a race. And I want to explain it with an analogy. Imagine yourself on a car racing track, okay? And you happen to have this pretty decent car, but you have two races ahead of you, okay? So the first race is with 20 competitors and these happen to have one of these amazing cars they're called Reliant Robins three-wheeled cars uh, powered by an engine which is probably the equivalent to um, your lawnmower <laughs> I don't think I need to tell you who's gonna win this race right <laughs> so even though you have 20 competitors you're gonna win this race no problem but you have a second race ahead of you and in the second race, you only have one single competitor. Unfortunately, it happens to be a professional Formula One driver. There is no way in the world you're going to win this race. Even though there are 20 times less people in the race, you have 20 times less competitors, you have no chance of winning this race, right? So, it's all about how strong your competitors are. That's going to make it harder to win. So what would you be asking in a car race if you were, you know, if, if someone asked you to race them, what would you be asking or what, how would you be comparing yourself with those people? You'd be asking things like the horsepower, you know, how much horsepower does this vehicle have? What's its top speed? What's its acceleration? How much experience does the driver have? Those are the things that would influence um, your, you know, the, the strength of, of your competitor and those are the things you can compare yourself with. And that's exactly the same thing you can be doing on Google. If you want to rank for a keyword, all you're interested in is winning the race. 
is appearing in one of the top spots. Only a very small percentage of people are going to click on page two, three or further. If you want to rank for a keyword, it has to be your goal to be on, say, you know, the first three or the first five spots. So really, all you need to be looking at is the first page of Google, looking at the top 10 results of Google for a specific term you want to rank for, and trying to figure out things which matter. The, you know, yeah, things like, you know, how old these sites are, how much authority they have, how many backlinks are showing to these pages, things like that. Those are the things you can compare yourself with. And those are the most important factors Google takes into account when, you know, ranking, making the order of the ranking of these pages. So these are the three crucial metrics. Search volume, how many people are looking for the keywords. Number two, the value, sorry, it's at position three on this slide, small error, no worries though. Number three, the competition strengths. These are the three things we need to be aware of. And what I want to do now is I want to show you how you can be doing this with free tools. You heard right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a live example showing you how to do keyword research with free tools. And I'm just going to, yeah go through the process and so that you can see how this works. So in the first step, we're going to generate keyword ideas with the free Google Keyword Planner tool. In the second step, we're going to have a look who's ranking for that keyword idea. In the third step, we're going to have a look, okay, so what are the metrics for these keyword terms? Um, how strong optimized are these terms? And with all this information, I'm going to show you how we can then find profitable keywords. So with that being said, let's start off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search for a random keyword. So say we had a blog in the area of personal development. So I'm just going to do a new search in the US in English for the keyword personal development. I'm going to say get ideas. And this is what happens. Google is kind enough to provide me with a list of 800 keyword ideas. Okay, and for every idea I can see how many times these keywords are being searched for. But I don't have an idea as to how competitive these keywords are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this list into an Excel file. Okay, they want my password again. Here we go. And I'm going to open this Excel file. Here we go. In Excel. And here we are. So that was the first step. Pretty straightforward, right? So we have list of keywords. We see how many times they get searched for on a monthly basis, but we still don't have an idea as to how strong the competition is. So I'm just going to quickly increase uh, the zoom so you can see it. So these are all potential keywords. Um, we can have a look at you know where in the buying cycle they are later on, but I just want to show you the process of figuring out, okay, do I have a chance of ranking for a keyword or not? So what I have to do is I have to take this keyword and I have to head over to Google and I'm just going to quickly switch my user here and I'm just going to fire up Google and I'm going to search for this keyword term and these are the top 10 ranking results, right? So if I want to rank for the keyword personal development on the first page of Google, this would be my competition. These are the top 10 ranking results. And what I need to do is I need to copy and paste every single URL, okay, and then have a closer look at it. Now, fortunately, there is a solution to this problem. There is another free tool called SEO Quake. It's a tool which I can install in my browser, in Google Chrome, for example. And if I redo the search, what happens is it adds a little bar to every single search result, which gives me some idea as to how well optimized these websites are, right? So I can see things like um, how much um, page rank do they have, how old are they, things like that, okay? And they're kind enough to provide a feature where I can download this list in an Excel-compatible way. And because these are 10 results, I need to open up a new sheet, right? Because otherwise I can't put them on one row, so I need another sheet. I just copy and paste, and I need to use the text import wizard to make sure they're in separate columns. 
But here we go. So far, so good. So with this tool, I can um, figure out the competition of, uh, sorry, I can download the top 10 li uh, websites ranking for this keyword term. And one thing I could now be doing, so I can sort of combine this all in one list, is to calculate um, an average value of the Google PageRank. So the Google PageRank value is a value between 0 and 10, which gives me a rough idea as to how strongly optimized this website is. Okay, And I can then link this value with this sheet, and then I can see, okay, so I'd have another column where I'd say average Google PageRank. And if I now do this for every single keyword, I have some way of figuring out how tough this keyword is. So uh, average page rank of over five is pretty tough. And what you could be doing is you could then go over to, to the same website and you could find out the page rank of your own website. So you maybe you'd figure out, okay, the page rank of my own website, the Google page rank, is maybe a three. And that would already give you, you know, sort of a first indication, do you have a chance of ranking for this keyword or is it totally out of sight? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick a second keyword, just a random second keyword, go through the same process, copy and paste the keyword. Fortunately, I do have a little bit of help with this free plugin. I do need a bit of um, patience until it's got all the information together. But after, um, say, a few seconds, half a minute or so, I have this information. And I then have the top 10 ranking results for this second keyword. I copy and paste this information again. Need to use the import wizard, so it's, it's in separate columns. I can then calculate another average from the top number one result to the last result. And I can then link this value again with my main sheet. And I can see. For the second keyword, we have an average page rank of 3.8. So it's pretty lower, a lot lower than the first keyword. So what I could say now is the second keyword is easier. So personal growth and development would be easier to rank for than just personal development, right? OK. So that's the process, generating ideas downloading the top 10 results for every single idea on Google and then having some form to get you know, the SEO metrics where we can combine this information. And with all this information in one Excel sheet, we can then filter out the best keywords according to you know, the different things we want to compare ourselves with. So I hope you kind of realized <laughs> the undertone during this short presentation. And I hope you see that we're having a few problems. So even though this is free, it's kind of a real pain because it's just so time consuming. We need loads and loads of time to analyze every single keyword, right? So we need at least, you know, probably two minutes if we're doing this by hand to sort of just get the basic information about the keyword, okay? So even if we have an assistant, you're probably not going to get more than three, 30 keywords analyzed an hour. And it's just tons of work. And kind of the worst thing is that this free data we can get, the data which is freely available through this free plugin, unfortunately, always isn't always um, as, as fresh as it should be. So this Google PageRank I was using to compare myself with my own website, um, I believe only gets updated about three times a year. So that's why we thought we need a solution which does this hard, cumbersome work for us and just saves us time so we can get to these keyword opportunities a lot quicker and so that we can focus our time and energy on other things which make more sense. That's why we created a tool called SE Cockpit. So SE Cockpit, short for Search Engine Cockpit, is a web-based, a cloud-based tool which does everything I just showed you um, in the cloud in a huge, very powerful server farm. And what I'm going to do is to present or demonstrate the power of this tool. I'm just going to start a new keyword search and what we can do is we can just click very easily. So if you have access to this tool, all you need to do is just click the button and start a new keyword search and we're just going to do the, the very same example. I'm going to search for personal development 
And again, here you can restrict it to, um, you can set the country and language, and all you then do is just hit the Save and Close button. And what's happening in the back end now, what's happening on our cloud or in our cloud is sheer magic. <laughs> so what's happening is our tool is going out and opening up the Google Keyword Planner tool and doing the keyword search for us. It's automatically getting this huge list of keywords, opening up every single keyword in Google, so it's doing a keyword search for every single keyword, downloading the top 10 results for every single keyword, getting valuable SEO information for every single keyword, uh, every single website, putting it all together in one list, and in a very short moment, we'll be seeing an update of the tool. Here we go. It's already started building this list, and in the bottom right-hand right corner, you can see we already have several hundred keywords, and they'll be adding over time as I continue speaking. And the thing that I can't bring over with enough, you know, I can't stress it enough, is that SE Cockpit has just done what I did for every single keyword in this list, okay? So, opening it up in Google Analytics, uh, Google AdWords, opening up in the Google search engine, getting all the information, SE Cockpit has just done that for hundreds of keywords uh, in just, you know, like a few seconds. It's probably just went on for one or two minutes now, and it's done that for every single keyword. So if I now click on, for example, professional development plan, I have every, I have all this information I needed to copy and paste myself together all in front of me. I can use it with just a few clicks. So I can click on every single keyword and I see the top 10 ranking results and I see all the information that's necessary to make a decision if this is an easy or a hard keyword. Now if you're looking at this list and you're saying, hey Sam, I don't have an idea, I don't have a clue what this is, you know, what is Moz rank, what are links, um, I probably know what Facebook likes are, nothing to worry about. What SE Cockpit does is it takes all of this information, which is really important, which helps you decide if it's an easy or a hard keyword, and it crunches it together in a very, very simple to view um, visual graph. So if this visual graph is, is almost empty, it's a very easy keyword. If it's almost full, it's a very hard keyword. Simple as that. And we then have this niche value, which takes into account the search volume and the competition. So ideally, basically the reason why we made this niche value was, um, the reason why we made it is we wanted to bring the keywords into a useful order. We wanted to have a list where at the top we have keywords where we have high search volumes with, you know, as low as possible competition but at the bottom of the list, we want to have those keywords which we don't even want to have a look at. Keywords where the competition is really, really tough or where there's hardly no search volume. So sort of the first thing you can order by is the niche value. But then the second really powerful thing is you can just filter and you can say, okay, for example, I just want really, really easy keywords. So this is the value between zero and 100 and we have, you know, a manual which explains all these values and what they mean. But, you know, something very easy is to say, okay, I'm only in interested in keywords which have a, a competition strength of 30% or less. Okay, so these are then all, so you just filter down a list of hundreds of keywords into a smaller list so you have the best keyword opportunities in, you know, just just like that. <laughs> and you can see, okay, so with just a few clicks, I've just broken everything down to um, the best keywords in this niche. So if I want to do a personal development blog, I've now got sort of a sub-niche keyword structured self-development, which is probably a part of personal development. So it's all about, you know, structured self-development. It may also be a book or, you know, something, but it may be something you could be writing about. And if we have a look at the pages ranking for this keyword, and that keyword gets searched for almost 2,000 times every single month, we can just have a look at one column. We can see how many, how many links, how many backlinks do these pages have? And you can see almost all of them have no backlinks, meaning it's like pretty, it's like almost, they're just there by random, okay? So they probably haven't invested too much time into optimizing their website. So what I'm saying is, 
SE Cockpit is basically the tool where you can spy on thousands of keywords really quickly and where you can drill down to the best keywords which has have the least which has the least amount of competition where you can then choose for your niche where you you can build your blog around and where you know okay this is the number of searches I'm getting this is the competition and you know okay this is a valuable keyword so what I encourage you to do is um, if you want to do me another live keyword search just type in a keyword and we'll do a few live keyword examples in just a minute so SE Cockpit is the tool if you want to find keywords for example if you have a blog so I believe a lot of you have you know build your own blogs and um, based on the empowerment network and something we could be doing is um, so basically if you're thinking okay it looks good but how would I be applying this to my own business so I wanted to show you another example so this is an example um, blog um, in this network someone that um, has been built up and now you want to figure out okay what keywords could I now be choosing which are worthwhile going after where I could optimize my website for these keywords where I can get more traffic and if we remember the funnel where we can get more of the good converting traffic and where we can get yeah more success in the end what you can do is you can simply copy and paste the URL of your own blog start a new search and base the search around the website so you can just copy and paste the website and what SE Cockpit is now doing is it's having a look at your website so you, you don't even know you don't even need to know a start keyword you can just say okay I already have a blog I'm just gonna I'm just gonna paste that in here and I'm just gonna see what SE Cockpit comes along with what I could be doing um, to further optimize my website and so it's having a look at this website trying to figure out what keywords are relevant to your content and you can then continue to optimize your website or continue your keyword research based on the keywords it's already finding in the first step okay so in a few moments it should be showing up with keywords um, maybe I'll come back to that example later on it's um, gonna come in a very short moment so that's just the first part of SE cockpit and there are so many other parts of SE cockpit which we can have a look at but you know Times moving on, and I don't want to don't want to go into too much detail because it's simply impossible. But the next step is going to be okay. Now that you've found awesome keywords, what do I do next? So you've used SD Cockpit to find the best keywords for your blog, for your service, for your website. What do I do next? We then have a project module where you can simply copy and paste or drag over keywords into a project module and what we provide is a step-by-step -step plan which you or your assistants can follow so we've basically broken everything down you need to do to optimize your website into a very easy to follow step-by-step -step task list and you can very easily see what's to do in this task how you can do it with WordPress for example um, the descriptions are very clear we have uh, journal capabilities where your assistants can you know keep track of what they actually did and where they can also say okay I've completed the task or you can use it yourself if you want to do the optimizing yourself you can create keep track of everything yourself and say okay this is the first task which is completed and you move on to the next task and you've got everything set out so you can basically move your website a step forward and get the success that you're looking for and so while I've been um, discussing the second awesome feature in SE Cockpit um, the search I just started for that blog as you can see it automatically figured out loads and loads of keywords which apply to this business or to this website but obviously a lot of these keywords are very tough to rank for so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna filter it again and say okay I want keywords which are easy so maybe 30% okay so it is a very tough niche so let's say maybe 50% uh, or less and you can see you can then drill down and then say okay so here we have a keyword for example earn extra money from home which is sort of a sub niche keyword and what you can then do is say okay so I just want to expand on this keyword and I believe I already prepared that so we can just save a little bit of time and by doing a second search by expanding you can then find even more keywords okay so you can drill down deeper 
Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to again filter by the competition and say, okay, I'm again only interested in very easy keywords. And quickly you can see that, okay, for example, this keyword here, home base drops, is a keyword which has very low competition and yet gets searched for 4,400 times. So what I've basically just done in front of you with a few clicks is I've done keyword research in a very, very um, competitive niche but showed you how you can further drill down very, very easily with this powerful tool which is only possible because it's just doing so much work in the back end so you can find the best keywords where you can position your website and um, yeah, get more of the right traffic. So with that said, um, I'm just looking into uh, the comments. I can see loads and loads of keyword ideas, and I will make, I will start um, live keyword searches, but I think we'll um, do that a little bit later on. So, the question obviously, does it work? Is all of this what I'm talking about? You know, this, you know. I can, you know, be presenting beautiful tools, be talking about loads of stuff, but you know, show me the proof. I'm honored to have a customer with this blog. It's a blog called speedendurance.com. You can have a look at it yourself. And I'm not allowed to say how much traffic he makes. I'm not also not allowed to say how much uh, in terms of sales he's doing. But all I can say is um, it's just amazing. I was able to have a look at the back end, but I had to promise that I don't um, yeah, share it with anyone. But they are making a killing with this blog. And they were able to make it or bring it to this success because they started off with the right keyword research. And he, the, the owner of the blog said, hey Sam, it was the right keyword research that I started off with. I got the right keywords. I was able to build the website around the right keywords. And look, this is the result. Um, yeah, they just they have a huge list which is building on autopilot every day and they're they're selling a very high ticket price, it's a very high tier price, but because they have a very clever system which then sort of follows up with all those email addresses, they can then finally get down to the best people who are then buy this high ticket item. But I also have a second example, unfortunately it's in German, we're a Swiss company and we also help people here in our local area, but it's, um, I think it's, um, you can you can relate to it. It's, a, it's an online shop selling self-tests where, for example, um, yeah, self-test to test water, self-test to test the water of your aquarium and things like that. But they also have uh, tests for your garden. They also have, um, uh, yeah, pregnancy tests, things like that. So technically, these products are quite similar, but obviously the marketing should be entirely different. So I said, hey, I mean, you can't be selling the same product. You can't be selling a pregnancy test on the same page as a water test. So what I suggested is, why don't we build smaller websites focusing on just one niche? Okay, so we build a smaller website, a smaller blog, just focusing on water tests, a smaller blog just focusing on the pregnancy tests, and just move it forward that way. And only in the second step then bring people link people to the shop where they can buy the product. What we did was we did the keyword research in SE Cockpit in all these different niches and the result was that within a few months, so you can see it was up to, so this graph shows up until mid 2013, within a few months we were able to increase the traffic by 260% thanks to this change. And it's not just the question, so basically this, the, the following question would be, okay, so just having more traffic isn't, isn't everything we want to know. How many more sales is this shop now doing? And this proves that we didn't just get more traffic, we also got more of the right traffic because sales increased by almost 400% within the same period thanks to us making these changes, thanks to us finding the right keywords, following the steps SE Cockpit provides in the step-by-step -step tasks and yeah, that's the result. So, I don't know, um, Lawrence, do you happen to be um, around that you can quickly jump on um, or maybe, yeah. I just want to quickly check with you, you know, um, what do you think? I mean, have I been, you know, teaching something, you know, is what I'm saying understandable? 
it's spot on. And, and the, the things I was typing to a couple people in the questions was like, number one, you are welcome to be on this webinar. And you're actually digging through my own website. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> do, do you understand like, like, like snooping and spying on someone's website, how hard that is? And, and you just did it like in a couple seconds. I'm like, oh, man. I hope you guys realize you're looking at my keywords. <laughs> but that's okay, though, because I want you guys to realize this stuff works. And just that small tip of you building feeder sites, like mini sites that build up to the larger website, people don't do that. Like they just try to make one giant like, like yeah. one giant website. I'm like being able to build these small niches that then pull into the main commerce site is awesome. And I really hope people are taking notes on that. Sort of the main benefit SE Cockpit provides, and maybe you can quickly compare it with you know me doing all this work manually. So it is possible to do this with free tools or with other tools, but the main problem every single other tool has, or every single other system, is the speed. SE Cockpit is up until this day the only tool which does an in a full analysis. So let me just quickly show you. So SE Cockpit always does a full analysis for every single keyword you find, every single keyword idea. Up until this day, it's the only tool which does that automatically. We can process all my, we can process hundreds of keywords per minute. So as you saw, these keywords just, you know, they just poured in. You, you almost don't have to wait for them. And that's because we've built up everything in the cloud, but obviously it comes at a price for us. But the benefit for you is you don't have to pull this all data together, you know, into Excel, whatever, you know, wasting you loads of time. And you can filter it really easily with just a few clicks. So the main benefit is you can get to the best keywords faster than any other tool. And as Lawrence just said, you can also spy on your competition. So you can just type in any website and basically see easily in front of you the best keywords you can go after which your competition maybe doesn't even know about. We also have more places where we, sources where we're getting keyword ideas from. I can maybe demo that later on. So most people are just getting keyword suggestions from the Google um, AdWords Keyword Planner tool, but we also have a few other possibilities to get keyword ideas uh, related to your project. So we have way more possibilities to find keyword ideas. The competition analysis provides the best data available. So I'm just going to quickly switch back my screen. So if we have a look at uh, you know one of these keywords, if we open up one of these keywords, the data we use to figure out this competition, to figure out the top 10 spots to then compress that into a competition value between 0 and 100 is the best data that's available on the market right now. And uh, we pay for every single search that's being done. And if someone wants to know more about this data, I'm more than happy to explain where it comes from in the questions and answers part of this presentation. So it's the fastest tool. And um, the data itself, so if you just wanted the data, um, we can have a look at that as well. It would be possible to sort of get the raw data from this other company. The data alone, which doesn't really help you, um, is already costing you at least $100 a month. Finally, we also have task lists, a project management tool which you can use either yourself or is ideal if you have an assistant helping you. So you have everything in one place. So you don't have to have, you know, these hundreds of Excel lists all over the place and you don't know where you're at with your projects. You have them all in one place. You can keep track of everything and you're very efficient. We obviously have full support, so we can have a look at all the videos later on as well and what well, I can show you where they are more to the point. And we have a manual and if there are still open questions, we have a friendly support desk, which is more than happy to answer question. Seeing how much time it costs me to use free tools in terms of my hour, my cost per hour, compared with SE Cockpit. So what I've got here is a very simple table just comparing how many keywords I can get processed an hour with free tools, so that would be about 30, and how many I can get processed with SE Cockpit. So I'm just saying with SE Cockpit it's an absolutely no problem to analyze 10,000 keywords, probably even loads more. But if I want to do that by hand, and if I say, okay, my time costs me probably a lot more than that, but I'm just using it as an example. If my time costs me $20 an hour, I'm like wasting $60 for every 100 keywords I'm analyzing. And the same amount of time for 100 keywords, you know, it just takes me a couple seconds. So it's like, it, it's, you don't need to worry about the time you're wasting because it doesn't take any. So that's just, you know, very important to know 
if you want to, if you're serious about keyword research, finding the best keywords, essentially being serious about being successful with your website, and if you want to invest your time where it makes sense, where it's worth your time, it's definitely not in this column. Okay. So this kind of keyword research can be applied to any kind of marketing asks uh, Shakira, um, e.g. Craigslist. Yeah, I mean, yes, essentially yes. I mean, on Craigslist, you're also looking for the right keywords. So, yeah, so I'm getting a lot of really, really positive comments, so thank you very much for those. Um, okay. So someone's asking specifically, okay, once you have your keyword, how do you optimize your website to then get it ranking for that keyword term? Now, that in itself would probably cover loads and loads of um, webinars by itself. So what I can say is we have a step-by-step -step task list here, which basically shows you the exact process you need to follow. But I even have something else really, really powerful for SE Cockpit members. And what we have built into SE Cockpit is a case study project. So we actually have a live case study project, case study project, sorry, uh, running. And you can see we already have loads and loads of uh, recordings of uh, the case study series we've already built up until this point. And Basically, what we're doing is we're building a website from zero, from scratch, and you can basically follow the entire process uh, step by step. So this again is only available to SE Cockpit members, and you can see everything, everything step by step in this series. So yeah, Jose for, uh, asks, how do I upload a list of keywords? Very easy. All you can do is you can choose. Uh, the second function, new keyword search from a list, and you can copy and paste an existing list of keywords, and it will analyze that list. I mean, there is just so much info, so much you can do. With SE Cockpit, you can also have a look at things like, um, is, for example, YouTube ranking on the first page of Google? Or I'm just going to do something else, is, for example, Squidoo ranking on the first page of Google? And what you can see is, with just one click, all the results where YouTube is ranking, okay? And let's do, do the same in, in this niche here. Let's just um, reopen, uh, let's just do that as well. Let's do the, uh, the Squidoo and the YouTube as well. Maybe let's see if we have any um, other pages here. Let's do hard pages and easy in articles. Oh well, so here we have one. So for example here, you have a keyword where you can just see, oh wow, there's a hub page is ranking on the first page of Google. What does that say about the keyword? Someone has created a hub pages account. So hub pages is a, a free web 2.0 uh, platform where you can just create yourself, you know, a new page. So it's like WordPress.com where you can create free blogs. And someone just created a hub page and got their ranking for the keyword "I need money." Pretty awesome. But on the other hand, yeah, ranking YouTube videos is where we wanted to get. Was um, what you can do is you can just filter out keyword results where YouTube videos are already ranking. So the cool thing is, with just one click, you can say I want to filter by this column. Now I only want to have a look at the keywords where um, YouTube is already on the first page, meaning it's going to be, you know. Google is already thinking videos are relevant for this keyword term, so I could create a new video, and if I can get more views for that video, um, I could probably outrank them pretty easily. Okay. That's an awesome trick, because uh, especially if you're looking at sites that um, that don't have YouTube, maybe you could break into it and just do a quick test. A YouTube video won't take very much uh, uh, time, I guess. Oh, yeah. Produce. And I guess the other one is if you know they're on hub pages and YouTube, you know you're on the same free platform. You can then all you got to do is just increase your backlinks or on page SEO and you can outrank that other person. So this is really good information to have on the fly without having to go into each one and check competition, check if they're on YouTube. It does it all automatically. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the cool thing is we're just, we're just giving away loads of, um, yeah, really cool tips as to how you can be successful. I mean, see, I mean, that's why I love what I do because there's like, there are like a million different ideas you could be doing with, with this, with this marketing tool. <laughs> and, you know, Lawrence gave you a few ideas. I've given you a few ideas, but it's like only, 
you know, just a few out of, you know, millions of things you can be doing with this. I mean, the opportunities are like endless. And yeah, all you need is a tool which shows you the opportunities. And that's exactly why we made SE Cockpit. So, okie dokie. So, let's do, uh, let's do two more because I know your time's precious. Two, two more questions, guys. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Let me just see if I've got, um, yeah, I'll just quickly say something. So someone asked about Google Hummingbird. Um, I'm not going to read the entire question because it's um, a very long one, but there's a very, very good article. Um, so let me just quickly say uh, just generally about the updates. So if you're worried, you know, if SEO still works, you know, yes, it does. Um, Lawrence has proven it. I've proven it. If you do SEO uh, with the right mindset, it works. If you follow the tasks we've set up here, it works. With Hummingbird, it's actually not at all such a deal. All Basically, what Google has been trying to do with Hummingbird is, you know, try and get more intelligent. So, what they're trying to figure out with with their update or with, with the Hummingbird update is if people, you know, type in things like, um, where can I get the best um, I don't know, pizza, um, where can I get the best pizza near me? It kind of, what Hummingbird now tries to do is it tries and tries to take in the entire context of your search query. So up until Hummingbird, websites which actually had this keyword phrase in, you know, on the page would be only the keywords or the websites ranking for this page. So what Google now tries to take into account is, okay, what is this person really searching for? Um, where are they at right now? And things like that. But sort of f for what we're doing, we're searching for the main keywords, right? And nothing has changed for those. So really the Hummingbird update has more to do with um, getting more intelligent, looking at the more long, 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 long tail keywords, right? So. And another question is, what are juice links, which I just want to have a quick uh, explanation. So the column juice links basically says Let's these are the it. links you can which are worthwhile comparing of roles, yourself with. Because you can build your backlinks to a website business, which have absolutely no um, value you know, in terms of how well it ranks. Um, but the juice links are basically filtering out those links which actually have an impact on the ranking. So. What I would say is we still have you know, too many questions we can answer. If you still have questions, do send us an email to support at swissmademarketing.com and we'll be happy to help you there.